Hello again, everyone. We are here again with Michael Wurman and Craig Wright, Aka Satoshi Nakamoto, an inventor of Bitcoin. Uh, today we are talking about, we're going to start talking about the history of accounting, um, economic effects of triple entry accounting. So I will start with a quick brief of, um, in the 16th century, the Medici family brought double ledger accounting to the known world, improved trade and wealth for all, through efficiency and reduction, um, sorry, and this brought improved trade and wealth for all uh, through efficiency and reduction in corruption that stimulated more trade. Uh, so the question I'm proposing to Craig is, what and where does Bitcoin fit into this? How does double ledger move on to Bitcoin? Okay, first of all, I'm going to have to um, apologize, but uh, I'm going to have to correct you. Um, double entry bookkeeping actually dates further back. It's Florentine, that's correct, but the Medicis weren't around in the um, 13th century to the same extent. So in 1211, um, a, a Florentine um, uh, published what was known as the Italian method of bookkeeping. Um, Alla Veneziana or Vien Viennese method. Um, so that was Lucia uh, Pacoli. Now, um, he later had a book, a mathematics, Summa di Arithmetica Geometrica Proportionia Proportiana, uh, which means everything about arithmetic geometry and proportion. Now, um, so part of all this was that he created a bookkeeping system because um, old um, uh, Lucia there was a Florentine banker. Now, if you know the history of like the Viennese, the Florentines, uh, the banking industry was really about the uh, sort of trade uh, at the high level between nations at the time. And many people don't like to call them nations because uh, borders were not, they were a lot more dynamic back then than they are now, but that's uh, just a matter of consensus and people had a lot more sort of skirmishes on the borders than they do now. Um, it doesn't change the fact that there are nations, uh, it just meant the borders changed uh, practically weekly in some areas. Um, all that given, the English government, the French, uh, all needed money for their, their wars. And you couldn't really take gold around, you couldn't carry big chests of it. They had to occasionally, uh, but every time you did that, then people tried to rob you. Um, usually barons pretending to be brigands. Um, but the, the reality here was uh, you had a piece of paper as a promissory note was invented saying, I'm moving this secure lot of gold into that guy's secure lot of gold. And you had a uh, group of uh, Italian states that were uh, fairly much out of the uh, sort of battle between kings in the area because of the papacy and uh, other aspects of history. and. Uh, that formed the foundation of why they became bankers. Now, we've covered why they became bankers, but now double entry bookkeeping um, improved the record keeping capability in that it allowed for the detection of errors. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're doing a single column and you add up, like you go one, two, uh, adds up to three, add up another thing, adds up to five, adds up, etc. Then when you add at the end, if you have a, an error, it carries forward. In double entry bookkeeping, you have to double check all you're doing. So um, every column, you have to add up the same columns and you would have to make the same error at the same place multiple times. And that's very unlikely and very difficult to do. So in creating a double entry book system, um, what they enabled was a set of checks and balances that allowed them to verify both that the multiple sets of ledgers matched um, and uh, that they could then have not only a single sheet, but they could match all the various ledgers in like all the different journals. So we, we think of journals today as 
like a record in a computer or like a spreadsheet or something. But in the days of the, the Florentines, the Venetians, a journal was actually a journal. It was a paper entry that then you would match up against this uh, matching table. So over time, uh, this developed and um, uh, Maestro Lusa, um, Lucia Piccioli was um, uh, sort of credited with this, but this invention allowed the banking system in um, to Venice to, to hold records, keep taxes um, and be secure. So part of how the Republic in, in, um, in Florence developed was the fact that they could keep copies of journals and know that no one could cheat. So um, uh, Craig, was that a competitive advantage back then? It was definitely a competitive advantage. So we had a number of different areas where, where banking was uh, attempted. The Florentines and the um, uh, Venetians did it quite a lot. Uh, the Florentines were, were a bit better at it. They, um, that's where the Medicis ended up um, sort of growing in power. And part of why the, I mean, uh, what people get wrong is they attribute it to the Medicis. The Medicis used this system that gave them advantages over the French bankers, advantages over the English. They could prove records. They could have them upheld. They had evidence that the papacy would, would actually stand by. So um, in having a set of books where the left-hand side is debit, the right-hand side is credit, uh, would allow everything to match correctly. And you could always know this has gone into the accounts, this has gone out of the accounts, and our assets are, are matched and um, uh, yeah, all worked well. Do you bring up something which you have brought up a few times in the Slack and mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, as people say, you know, and as we know, Bitcoin is immutable but amendable. Mm -hmm. um, can you briefly explain how amendments work in the contemporary world and, and how they would work on Bitcoin? Um, so you can't change the entry, but like in any um, double entry book, you can put addendums saying that you've made an error. So you can have an error journal and you can just update saying this is where it went wrong. Now, that's there's nothing wrong with that. There's people sit there and go, oh, you can't change it. Well, you're not actually changing the journal. You're adding an entry, correcting an error. Um, uh, uh, Joel, Bitcoin... Joel, before, Joel, before we go into Bitcoin's role in all of this, I have one more mm. question for Craig. Um, how long did it take for the rest of the world back then to adopt double entry accounting? Like, was it, um, uh, yeah. Mm. So uh, let's go back to the earliest notion of, of some, where this came from. Um, 70 AD, um, after um, Augustine, uh, August, uh, then Pliny the Elder um, uh, described one of the accounting systems that were used in Rome, which was tabulae ratorum. Um, so in this system, uh, what you would have is something similar to the Indian Jama Nama uh, that was a double entry system, but not quite as efficient as the modern one. Now, um, so we're talking 1,100 to 1,200 years between what should have been a moderately good accounting system, say 1.9 entry to double entry. Um, then from the 1,200 to 1,600 period, um, although the Florentine merchants in the 13th century were we're doing this. The uh, Minucci, the Fraroli families um, had done it. The Giovanni Farofi and company um, had done this extensively. It was all internal. So one of the problems, of course, was uh, uh, actually goes into why we have patents today is, uh, as an example, most students who come out of um, high school will know how to 
uh, solve a quadratic equation. They have the formulas to solve that. They can even probably do um, cubic equations. Those formulas were known a thousand years ago, but apprentices were sworn to secrecy and there were guilds of mathematicians. Um, so you wanted to be an architect and you wanted to know this magic of how to calculate, how to make a, um, a dome. Well, um, you were sworn never to tell anyone else. And um, this is part of the problem, the whole um, knowledge not being disseminated. So for about 400 years there, knowledge was known, but very, very tightly structured. So people would go over to, um, um, to Italy and, oh, after everything else I've said, the, the one that should be at the top of my mind, the, um, uh, it's one of the, it, it's, it argues it's the oldest university in the world. Um, um, others argue it's not. Um, uh, it's an Italian university in Tuscany. Uh, people would train there and learn some of these techniques and go into courts in other parts of um, the world. And um, in the early uh, sort of French courts, uh, the title of, of Count uh, was actually given for people who were uh, not fighting, but effectively accountants. So mm -hmm. account was actually uh, someone who ran the accounts and, and treasury and other such things. Um, but anyway, going back into, into this, so if we're looking at how this um, sort of grew, um, after the 14th century, it started going uh, more widespread. By 16th century, enough of it had escaped. Um, and once we had printing and it got onto um, uh, printed pages, then uh, like, I guess with the track discus, the Mercatana in Venice, uh, 1550 something, um, Manzoni in um, his books, after that, it, it just became widely known. The reason why I ask that is I, um, I want to ex try to expect how long it would take if we take the premise that Bitcoin would enable triple entry accounting. And today the knowledge is out there, so we wouldn't have to wait centuries for it to be adopted. No, because we disseminate information. Um, so this is the other aspect of patenting that like people sit there going, oh, patents are bad. But the reality is patents disseminate information. So we had um, basically from uh, the, the Roman Empire up until the, the 12th century, very little dissemination of information. It was people under apprenticeships and controlled knowledge. And right now, you might have information locked up for 20 years with a license, but it's known. Even before the end of the 20 years, you can start building on it. You can extend it. You can create your own patents and sub-license part of it, but still make money and, and innovate. That's something people don't seem to understand. Um, because something's patented it doesn't mean you can't invent something new. In fact, you can. Um, you might have to share some of the profit, but so what? If you and you're the inventor of an airplane, forget all this uh, American stuff about the Wright brothers locking people out. The reality there was the um, uh, American crew um, named ailerons but the Wright brothers had already invented them and sitting there going, I've called it an aileron. Big whoop de doo da. I mean, these guys invented it. You put a name on it. I mean, that, that, that's what we're currently doing in this world with Twitter and everything too. Um, people sit there going, oh, Craig or someone else didn't name his invention properly. I've named it differently, so I should own it. Welcome to the world. Yeah. Um, as an accountant, as a previous accountant that you are, um, hmm. is there 
if you were coming to Bitcoin uh, with a new face, you were not yourself, you were just an accountant from the outside coming in, is there things you would want to be able to do on Bitcoin as an accountant, uh, using it for, uh, well, you would imagine double ledger, but if you were told you can use it for something more, what would you like? Um, what, what would you say? Accounting entries, of course, but I can. Um, the simple answer is, there's nothing I can say you can't do. Um, as, as I pointed out before, uh, white paper number one was general ledgers on, on uh, a blockchain. So, um, yeah, I, something for, for people to think about is um, uh, the scales of justice and the symmetry of God uh, and the universe, uh, like um, even which is a reimagining of the um, uh, Roman and Greek God, Justia, um, Athena. Um, then what we're really looking at is the scales of justice are our double entry bookkeeping. We weigh the in and the out. So um, I'm, I'm sure we've all seen the um, the sort of figure of the blind woman justice holding the scales as she stands on the snake with a sword. Well, that's the whole thing. We're, we're balancing all these aspects of the world. And how does triple entry accounting fit into that analogy? So what we're now doing is locking it down to a single set of accounts. So you need one more point. That's what people don't think about. So in um, uh, getting your location, how many points do you need? Three. Do you? Well, in a 3D world? Yes. Um, yeah, you'd need time, space, and... Well, actually, um, what people don't seem to realize is to accurately get a point, you need four. So, um, if you want to uh, get GPS satellites to map you, you need four of the things. So, the thing with double entry accounting that no one thought about is you don't need the two points to get two points, you need three. So if we have two points, we don't know which set of accounts is real. The third entry, the third entry locks a single set of books. And um, would you say that this is something which people are currently doing on Bitcoin or something yet to be uh, explored properly? definitely something to be explored properly. Um, are they doing it? No. Um, people keep doing a whole lot of other weird and wonderful things, um, but no, they're not doing what they should be doing. Would, um... We're talking about, Joe, I have one more question concerning the triple entry accounting with Bitcoin, because I and mm -hmm. Greg at CoinGeek Zurich talked about mm -hmm. um, we could use the blockchain as the third point or we could use the central banks, Craig. What do you um, think about the central banks? Well, there's banks no robustness there? in central banks. That, that's the whole problem here. Um, in 1991, the concept of time, time chains first came out, um, which mirrors the sort of concept of PCI. And, um, and if anyone remembers Diginota, and Microsoft and everyone else being compromised, Google even, by the Iranians and the North Koreans, then uh, you get to a point where the lowest common denominator sets what happens. So if the weakest part of the central bank gets compromised, everyone's compromised. So th this is the problem that these guys don't seem to understand. It needs to be a distributed competitive system. I know if you're bureaucrats, that's a hard thing to swallow, but just uh, trust me, meritocracies work. They're efficient. Okay, uh, leading on from that, as a, say, as a politician, why would it be beneficial to a politician or to a government to adopt a triple uh, ledger accounting system? 
lower rates of um, fraud, um, quicker uh, ability to um, take in tax, um, lower um, sort of errors, um, the ability to lower cost by having automated accounting, um, automated billing, uh, accurate records, matching between companies, um, the ability of course to uh, do all of this without increasing your budget and probably decrease it, uh, which was my mistake uh, in approaching um, the tax de department and, and telling them effectively that half of them will be obsolete was probably not a good thing to do to a, um, uh, a bunch of bureaucrats. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm like, going to make you no longer have a job. Although the guys at the top would have the job, um, but the way that bureaucrats work isn't about efficiency. They don't get paid for that. They get a paid uh, salary that is based on how big a empire they make. So the less efficient, the better. Um, okay, well, bringing it on to uh, what economic effects are to be expected uh, by using Bitcoin as a triple en entry ledger, that is on a global scale. As we moved from single ledger to double ledger, um, I want to throw in this second question as well to that as well, is can you expect um, the world if, to ever move from a double ledger to a single ledger? And uh, so, sorry, the first question is, what economic well, no one's effects? going to go back to a single ledger. They don't work, and um, and governments and um, accounting functions don't allow it. So, and so, um, what economic effects do you imagine a triple ledger to accounting system to have on the world at large when it's used in mass? Um, a reduction of fraud is the the main thing I would say. Um, efficiency and reduction of fraud. They're they're the two main areas. If the world moves to a triple ledger accounting system, can you imagine it moving back to a sec, uh, to a double ledger accounting system? Well, I can imagine it. I mean, I watch zombie movies all the time. Um, so if the world has collapsed in the zombie apocalypse, then paper ledgers will probably be the thing. Um, all this argument, Bitcoin will be there for me when the world collapses. No, it won't. Bitcoin is a highly connected system based on a combination of um, electricity around the world, power grids, um, networks, etc. The first thing to go in a collapse will be Bitcoin. I mean, this is the irony, all these people going, when the government falls down, the first thing is gone is Bitcoin. I mean, Twinkies will be there, but Bitcoin will be gone. Michael, do you have any further questions on this topic? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got one. Um, Craig, are you building something concerning triple entry ledger at Enchain on Bitcoin that could be used by governments or companies at the moment? Well, are you I mean, on it? it doesn't actually take that much to do. I mean, you could actually have an Oracle database and um, link it into um, Bitcoin. So you could have a hybrid system and it's still a triple entry. So um, as for instance, a daily or a, like Merkleized structure of what you're doing, um, or even better, every time you write, you um, have an updated ledger entry. Um, and we can handle that sort of level of volume, even for every country on earth. So yeah, I mean, you don't need to Are have you everything at Enchain well, or not. Don't answer I mean, that, that's all, that was already that, that was already possible. I mean, like I said, uh, white paper 0001 mm. um, was exactly that concept. So um, the whole notion of can we notarize things? Can we put things on chain? Of course, um, it's then getting people to use it. So uh, over time, we will get um, uh, hopefully Tuvalu will uh, sort of not take too long to do. Um, it's a small, small government, small country, but um, 
large governments, large countries will take a long time to do. This is where people don't seem to understand. Moving uh, records and, and uh, putting things on uh, electronic format takes long enough. Uh, so. Okay, and with that, I will end this first half of our interview. Thank you very much. No problem. <laughs>